I would have bet the ranch on that well. That field is down there somewhere. I'm sure of it. I think so, too. We're running out of time. We got to start clearing Site B right after New Year's. How long will it take you to sink two more rigs here and here? With the way the ice is jamming the drills, I'll have to triple the dynamite to clear them. Four or five days. OK, go ahead. When does Murdoch arrive? This evening. And he's not going to be very happy. It's Claudia now. What did you decide? What did you decide? Come on, Claudia, be reasonable. I know. I've been more than reasonable. The last five years, I've been trying to raise a family in deserts, the Brazilian jungle, and now this place. Well, at least we're living in a house this time. I have my reservations as to whether it qualifies as a house. A home, no way. All right, then. Be realistic. I've got everything on the line here. You know I'm the one to talk Murdoch into this exploration. I can't just walk away from it. And I can't stay here any longer. Our children deserve a civilized existence, and CB particularly needs a stable life. Don't start that again. There's nothing wrong with CB. Well, you're not around him enough to know. He's having a lot of problems, and he's constantly fighting at school. You know, Michael, I've made up my mind. I'm moving the kids back to Los Angeles after the new year. Why can't you take that head office job that Murdoch offered? I told you. I'm not an office type. I'm a field man. This is what I do. I only need a couple more months at the most. You've hung in this long. I'm sorry. You haven't said anything to the children yet, have you? Of course not. I wouldn't want to spoil their Christmas. Very serious talk right now, young man. Hedda had to go to her sister's. Are you going to make dinner for us? We can't send out for the pizza man, can we? Oh, Dad. Mr. Murdoch's here. He's waiting for you in the den. But, Dad. 
Dad, you said you and me were going to have a serious talk right now. Your mother will have to talk with you. Oh, Dad. I don't care. You have him call me the minute you hear from me. You understand? Right. She... That Fred Haley, he needs a keeper. How are you, Michael? Hi. How was the plane trip? Oh, the usual. A little rough the last couple hundred miles. Will you join us for dinner, Sumner? Thanks. I ate at the hotel just after I checked in. So, how's everything shaking? Well, uh, I hate to give you bad news, but uh, <clears throat> Rig 5 came in dry today. Rig 5? You said that was 90% probable. Yeah. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not interested in apologies, kid. Just results. All right, all right. We'll forget about the A site. We'll forge ahead with site B. I'm sure I'm right about the A site. Just give me another week or two. I'll give you one week. In the meantime, move as much of the crew as you can over to site B. Morning, Craig. Michael. Murdoch just left for site B. He's in some rotten mood. So, what else is new? Morning, Mike. Good morning, Sam. Looks like Arnie Hansen over at Bureau Cole is up to his old practical jokes again. <laughs> Probably running out of things to do with all his money. What is it this time? Much better than the Bigfoot paw prints he spent the night putting around your house last Christmas. Tell me, tell me. Oh, uh, I wouldn't want to spoil it for you. I'll let Arnie's little man tell you himself. He's in your office. <laughs> Help you? Oh. oh. Yes. Yes, you may. Uh, Michael Baldwin. I'm the project manager here. My name is Ed. Ed. Uh, That's right. Ed. Oh, I see. <clears throat> well, Ed, can I get you a cup of coffee? Won't you have a, a nice cup of hot chocolate? I'm afraid not. Oh. That's all right. That's perfectly all right. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you, yes. Well, uh, Ed, what brings you to this frozen hellhole, if you'll excuse the mixed metaphor? Mixed metaphor, mixed metaphor. Does that mean I can get right to the point? Uh, yes, that's what that means. Good. Mr. Baldwin, your company has been doing a great deal of dynamiting in the North Pole region recently. Uh, that's right. Uh, ice has been jamming our drilling rigs, and we've been forced to do some heavy dynamiting to free them. You don't know what you're doing, Mr. Baldwin. You must stop dynamiting immediately. Okay. <clears throat> Why should I do that? Because if you continue, there's a very good chance you're going to blow up Santa Claus. I beg your pardon? Mr. Baldwin, I'm Santa's chief elf at North Pole City. And we realize you had no idea you were creating such problems for You're us. You're the chief elf? Mm-hmm. May I? We've already sustained serious damage because of explosions here at, at Site A. But dynamiting here at Site B would most certainly destroy North Pole City. We're, we're smack dab next to it. <laughs> Blow up Santa Claus and destroy North Pole City. <laughs> Arnie gets crazier every year. Arnie? Oh, I gotta give you credit, though. I, I couldn't have pulled it off with a straight face. <laughs> Oh, come on, come on. Tell us what happened next. Well, he looks me straight in the eye. 
And he invited us all to visit Santa Claus tomorrow. <laughs> but why us? Well, he wants to convince us to stop dynamiting at our sites because he's afraid we're going to blow up Santa Claus. <laughs> Did Arnie finally own up to it? I haven't spoken to him yet. I think he's still out of town. There aren't any little people around here. Where in the world did he find him? Well, knowing Arnie, I'm sure he had him flown in just for the occasion. <laughs> Maybe it isn't a joke. Maybe he really is Santa Claus's chief elf. That's impossible. Santa Claus is just a mythological figure. What's a myth a myth? It's nothing, CB. David's just being a smart aleck. Hey, I was just kidding. Well, it isn't funny. May I be excused? Me too? Yes, go ahead. What's wrong, honey? Nothing. Come on. Now we know what David meant. Meant about what? You know, Santa Claus. What about Santa Claus? I guess Kurt Larson wasn't lying. There is no Santa Claus. He isn't real. Mom, you always said you wouldn't lie to me. I want to know. Tell me, please. For all of us who believe in Santa Claus, he is real in our hearts. But he's not a real person? Uh, well, no, not in the same way that you and I are. You just ruined everything. I hate you, Mom. I wish you were dead. Don't you dare talk to your mother that way. Now go to your room. Too, Dad. I really hate you. Was that necessary? Why don't you try to understand him instead of losing your patience? Very good, sport. You're really getting the hang of that thing. Come on, CB. Sit on my lap and you can steer. No, thanks. Stop being indulgent. Ride with Dad. Will you please talk English? Okay. It's my turn then. Ah, uh, hold it, honey. We better put the snowmobile away. You don't want to be late for school, and I got to get to work. Well, we only got a half a day today. Do we have to go? Mom said we were going to decorate the tree today. Yes, you have to go. We'll start on the tree after lunch. Now put the snowmobile away, change your clothes, and get going. Fred, you're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot! No. No. No! That's what they want us to do! Two words, Fred. Walk away. Gaylord and those corporate jackals of his over at Global Oil, they're up to their old tricks again. Well, Fred didn't close, did he? You heard me. I told him to walk away. Just like I'm going to walk away from this entire development. Unless you bring something in soon. It's here, Sumner. I know it's here. On one of the two sites. We've had a few problems. Oh, no, baby. You have problems. You're the chief geological engineer on this project. You recommended this exploration. And if I don't see some results soon, I'm pulling out, and you're going to be looking for a job. Here they are. Oh, well, that's good. Well, that's it for me. i got to get going. But, Dad, we haven't finished decorating the tree. I know, but I have another meeting with Mr. Murdoch. He acts like he owns you. He doesn't own me, Princess, but he does pay the bills around here. All right, kids. The dishes. Oh. 
Okay, okay, come on. Come on. I'll see you later, darling. Who could that be? I'll get it. Where did you get that? The army abandoned it here after the war. It's the only one like it. That's very interesting, but I don't have any time for Arnie Hansen's jokes today. Jokes? Michael, who is it? Hansen's elf is back. Come on in. Claudia, I'd like you to meet Santa Claus's chief elf, Ed. Ed, this is Mrs. Baldwin. Wait, hello. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. You'll have to discuss it with her. I have an urgent meeting to go to. I'll probably be late. W won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Oh, goodness. My goodness, I... I'm sure I said today. Do you suppose you and the children could come with me, Mrs. Baldwin? Come where? Home to North Pole City. To North Pole City. Yes. <laughs> to meet him. To meet who? Santa Claus. finished helping Hedda, how would you like to go and meet Santa Claus? Meet Santa Claus, sure. Come on, Ma. Don't put us on. Well, Mr. Hansen's little friend is back. He's out in front. He is? He sure is. And we've all been invited to go to the North Pole. Well, we'll all meet a big white rabbit and go to the Mad Hatter Tea Party. <laughs> Will you please shut up? Can we go? Can we go? Even if it is a joke? <laughs> Here we are. These are my children, David, Marianne, and C.B. Marvelous. It's very nice meeting you. Let me help you in. Good well, here we go. Not now, CB. There's not time. Perhaps when we get where we're going. I can tell you Santa Claus appreciates this, Mrs. Baldwin. Once you've met him, I hope you can convince your husband to stop the dynamiting. Oh, I'm sure of it. Mr. Baldwin is a very reasonable man. Oh, good. That makes me feel a whole lot better. Going. Oh, about a hundred miles an hour, I suppose. It, it's pretty slow. Not like the reindeer zephyr. What's a reindeer zephyr? You'll see in a little while. A hundred miles an hour. Wow. You must have made a mistake. It's an engineering impossibility a snowcat can go that fast. Not with Dr. Fernando, it isn't. Dr. Fernando? Sends his chief of research and development. Uh, he's the one who modified this uh, thing. I'm a little worried, David. Do you think we're really going 100 miles an hour? Of course not. It's an illusion. We're probably not going 20 miles an hour. Well, we seem to be going pretty fast. I know. There's an increased perception of velocity in both the Arctic and Antarctic regions. If you say so. The storm seems to be getting worse, Ed. I think we better be getting back. Uh, don't worry, Mrs. Baldwin. We'll be out of this storm in just a moment. And then you're going to see the most beautiful weather you've ever seen. <laughs>
Here we are. I told you. Wow, look at that. There it is. That's a reindeer zephyr? It's one of our more sophisticated long-distance vehicles. Vehicles? I don't see any reindeer. How does it go? It's self propelled You've got to be kidding. <laughs> That's a mock-up. You've got to give that Arnie Hansen credit. This one's a real winner, Mom. <laughs> I know it. Well, let's get going. Let's go. This is terrific. No, hold on. Just wait a minute. Oh, gee. Can't we see it for a few minutes? No. I think this joke has gone far enough. There's something wrong here. What could be wrong? I don't know, but... I do know that no one would go to this link to pull off the joke. What else could it be? You don't think that thing's going anywhere, do you? Of course not. But what harm could come from looking at it? Please, Mom. Oh, please. Just for a few minutes. Okay. Just for a few minutes. Wow, look at that! Pretty, isn't it? Seriously, Ed, we've got to start back soon. Uh, I promised we'd be back by six. Six? Oh, that's impossible. Uh, can't you call and tell them you'll be late? Call? From where? Uh, our communications post. Right there. Uh, get on board, children. Get on board. Your, your mother's going to make a telephone call. Uh, what's your credit card number? All the rigs are ice jam? That's right, Mr. Murdoch. We're going to start blasting sometime today. I think one time will do it. We're using enough dynamite to blow up New York City. We'll set the rig tomorrow and start drilling the day after. Good work, Harold. Listen, tell Craig Marin to meet me at Site B in the morning. Tenfold. Hello? This has got to be the most expensive stunt Arnie's ever pulled. Well, I'm at a phone booth. Well, it's a... Uh... You're talking into a candy cane, and you're going to go to the North Pole in a reindeer. I mean, it's like a, a carousel reindeer with seats inside. Michael? Michael, can you hear me? This guy looks awful. It's the storm. I'm afraid that's the best we're going to do. Claudia! Operator! Operator! Uh, I mean it, Ed. A few more minutes and we have to get back. You know, please trust me, Mrs. Baldwin. You're going to love the ride. Uh, all right, all right. You certainly can't carry this on much longer. Everybody ready? Are you really sure about this thing, David? Trust me, Mom. Pigs will grow wings before this thing will move an inch. Here we go. Impossible or not, this thing is moving. This isn't funny anymore, Ed. I'm telling you to turn this thing around right now. I can't. It's remote control, and all the controls are in North Pole City. You mean you're not driving it? No, I'm a passenger, just like you are. Wow, this is really great. Mom, I'm scared. I'm telling you for the last time, Ed, this joke is gone far and then no! Did you 
see that? Those doors. This is more than a practical joke, David. Welcome to North Pole City. If this isn't a practical joke, we're in big trouble. I know, Mom, I know. We're here, and we're really going to be Santa Claus. Our elf population here numbers in the thousands. Enough to operate the largest toy factory in the world. Santa's factory? Will we get to see that, too? <laughs> oh, yes, you're going to see it, CB. In fact, Santa is going to take all of you on a complete tour. I don't know why, but I think someone's doing a mind trip on us, Mom. I know, and it's going to be up to you and me to keep our heads. There's Santa's house. It's the oldest building up here. It looks pretty much the same as it did when he first built it. Suit which Santa designed himself. It keeps you warm when you're outdoors and cool when you're inside. We have them for the children, too. Thank you. This is for you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. When did we get to meet Santa? Pretty soon now. You heard him, Mom. We're gonna get to meet him soon. In the meantime, we'll, uh, we'll go to the dining room. We got here just in time for a hot chocolate break. I know you don't believe me, Mrs. Baldwin, but you're going to feel a lot better after you meet Santa. You have to believe him. Yeah, I understand. Thanks, Arnie. Bye. Arnie Hanson doesn't know anything about it. I feel so helpless. What am I going to do? Nothing. App. Absolutely nothing. Are you crazy? What are you talking about? Put yourself together. I have to do something. Now, listen to me. I guarantee you that Gaylord has got Claudia and the children. Gaylord? What possible reason would he have to kidnap my family? I don't know yet, but I'll tell you this. He's the most dangerous man that I've ever known. And until we know for sure, you better not rock the boat. Thank you. The, uh, the chocolate is a secret formula of Santa's. He developed it in 1886. Almost 87. Ed? Yes, Marianne. Some of my friends and I were talking at school about how Santa can get up and down all those chimneys. Well, first of all, Santa's suit and boots are fireproof. Of course, there are a number of homes where the chimneys are too small for Santa. Well, what about those places? 
and the places with no chimneys at all? That's a good question. I'd say Santa uses chimneys oh, less than 5% of the time now. For all the places he can get in conveniently, he uses his molecular redistribution invention. Molecular redistribution? Yeah. He calls it a, a people transporter. It, it works with goodies, too. It's a, a platform on the side of his sled. Oh, sure. We're wasting too much time and money on side, eh, Michael? Tell Faulkner to abandon it and move everything over to Site B right now. But you gave me a week. I was before this Gaylord thing. Look, I don't care how you do it. I want to start blasting by the 24th. That's Christmas Eve day. Have you got me? Well, we weren't scheduled to start dynamiting there till after New Year's. I just changed the schedule. Not playing a base. Base to Apple A. Harold? Any news about Claudia and the kid? Nothing yet. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, we're going to dynamite in about a quarter of an hour. Good. Uh, and tomorrow, you're going to have to start moving everything over to Site B. Everything? Uh, well, not everything. Why don't you set up a skeleton crew there on Site A and set up a new rig? There's oil there. I know it, Harold, and we're going to find it. We take very short breaks at this time of year. We have an enormous amount of toys and presents to get ready by Christmas Eve. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I'm going to tell you one more time. Sing anything you want. White Christmas, Frosty the Snowman. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but no more Jingle Bells! I knew it, I knew it, it's Santa Claus. He's a real man, Mom. Welcome, Mrs. Baldwin. Thanks for coming. And a special welcome to the show. I apologize for sounding a little grumpy, but uh, over a hundred years of Jingle Bells, well, that's enough. And uh, frankly, it's been driving Mrs. Claus and I right up the wall. Yes, I understand. I'm sorry I'm late, but the recent explosions have damaged our communication systems, you see, and I've been spending all my time trying to repair it. How are you, C.B.? You really know me? <laughs> of course I know you. I know all the children of the whole world. As a matter of fact, I think you're just about the same age as your grandfather was when I gave him a red wooden sleigh in 1922. It was a great model, big success. Wow, 1922. How old are you, Santa? Let's just say I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I really appreciate your visit here, Mrs. Baldwin. I'm sorry Mr. Baldwin isn't here, too. Well, he's not any sorrier than I am. I see, I see. You think this whole thing is some kind of hoax, don't you? I don't know what to think. I must apologize to you, Mrs. Baldwin. I should have anticipated there might be some problem with my credibility. It's been diminishing more and more every year. But as soon as we get our communication system working, we can radio Mr. Baldwin and advise him that you're safe. I'd appreciate that. We're obviously going to have to have a little talk, aren't we? But before we do that, I'd like to know your children better. How about that, C.B., Marianne, David? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. There seems to be a lot of different Santa Clauses in the store around Christmas time. 
They certainly are. They all couldn't be me now, could they? But I try to visit some of the stores before Christmas. Was that really you? Yeah, my belly full of jelly and all. And as I recall, you were visiting with your grandmother, and you pulled my beard. Yes, David. It seems it's a logistical impossibility you can deliver all those presents in just one night. Oh, I was wondering when that would come up. Well, first of all, the different time zones make it a little easier for me. Time zones? Oh, yeah. Uh, you see, when it's midnight in New York, it's only 5 o'clock in the morning in London. 9 o'clock at night in California. I think it would take the whole night just to cover a small area of one city. You're absolutely right, David. It would take the whole night, if it weren't for the TDD. That's the time deceleration device. Here, let me show you. This is really something. Now, look over there at the North Pole constant time clock. See, the spinning little candy cane measures time in microseconds, exactly like they do in the Olympics. Now, as I switch on the TDD, you watch the clock. Now, you see? The TDD is slowed time. It decelerates time as I go from area to area, and it slows things down more than enough to give me time to make my deliveries. our research and development department developed it based on Einstein's theory of relativity. It's incredibly complicated. As a matter of fact, it's Greek to me. But all I know is it works. Now then, may I suggest that uh, Mrs. Claus entertain the children while we have our little talk? Thank you. Good. <laughs> They're dynamiting again. They're dynamiting again. This is our newest building. It's the safest place to be. Ed, you stay with me. I've got to get to Master Control Headquarters. Oh. It's been hours. Where are they? What if it isn't Gaylord? Got a better answer? Driven to the North Pole by a diminutive chauffeur in a reindeer? Well, I saw him. Oh, yeah, of course. Just like the Saudis saw things when Gaylord ripped them off last year. You think Claudia and the children have been drugged? They had the guts to drug the Saudis. Well, here we are. Good evening, Mrs. Claus. Uh, may I present Mrs. Claudia Baldwin, and these are her children, David, Marianne, and C.B. This is Mrs. Santa Claus. Hello. Hello. Hi. My, my children. What a pleasure it is to have you here. Thank you. It was pretty scary for a while there, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And Papa's so pleased that you could come. And it looks as though it was just in time, doesn't it? Yes. Well... Enjoy yourselves. Uh, I'll be waiting to escort you back when you're finished. Excuse me? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> now, um, why don't you all follow me into the study? should be here very soon. May we have a look around, Mrs. Claus? Oh, yes, please do. And uh, please call me Martha. Thank you, Martha. Claudia. Oh. <laughs>
That's all right. You can pick it up. It won't break. It's iron. It was Papa's most popular toy from 1838 to 1843. And that was Papa's big hit in 1950. There's a record player in the tummy. You know, many of the toy companies get some very good ideas from Papa. I bet they do. Boy, I remember this little tank I got one Christmas. It used caps and shot BBs. Well, you didn't get that from Papa. Parents often give their children gifts and say they're from Santa Claus. Toy guns, for example. Papa has never given a child a gun. He doesn't like guns. He doesn't believe in violence. I thought I told Bruce and maintenance to have this doorknob fixed a week ago. Oh, please, don't blame him. He's so overworked, he hasn't even repaired the kitchen sink. Uh -huh. no. How bad is it this time? Well, fortunately, the damage is minimal. But for a moment there, it reminded me of the Christmas I was making my deliveries in London during the Blitz. Oh. Well, it certainly scared the wits out of me. Well, hello again. Hi. Hi. Well, Claudia, if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to start preparing a little supper. You kids want to help her? Good. Well, come along then. <laughs> well, now then. We can talk alone. Claudia, I'm sure you realize by now how serious this dynamiting is. And we certainly don't want to alarm the children more. I agree. Good. Well, first of all, I want to show you something. Now, this is a precise miniature of no. Oh, I, I'm going to have to make a confession. Uh, that's just for Christmas Eve. I mean, if my beard were really that long, I'd never be able to make up my mind to go to bed with it over or under the blanket. I get precious little sleep as it is. All right, back to business. Now, as I was saying, this is a precise miniature of North Pole City. I chose this location because uh, these ice formations, technically called seracs, totally conceal our little city from the sky. Now, the reindeer zephyr ended here. All an unwelcome visitor would find is, is an impenetrable ice wall. Our little city is also protected by very sophisticated anti-radar and electronic detection devices. Map of the Arctic Circle. North Pole City is right here. Now, your husband's company has been dynamiting here. And Ed has advised me Mr. Baldwin also intends to dynamite here. It's preferred to as Site B. That'll be right after the New Year. As you can see, if he dynamites there, it'll be the end of all of us. Yes, yes, I, I can see that. I know you would. Now, the main oil field isn't there. It isn't? No over here on site A. They'll just have to keep drilling there. So if you'll merely explain that to your husband, I'm sure he'll change his plans. Explain it to him? Be honest with me. You haven't believed a word I said. I don't believe you. I, I don't know what you really want. You seem like a very nice man, and, and this is certainly an incredible place, but, I mean, let's face it, Santa Claus is a mythological figure. I mean, you know there's no such person as Santa Claus. There never has been, and there never will be. <laughs> well, Martha's going to be very shocked to learn that. Well, I guess I'll just have to prove it to you, then. I really wish you could. Why don't we sit down? Now then, let's see. 
It was Christmas Eve, you were five. No, no, you were six. Living in Houston, Texas. Houston, that, that's right. Mm -hmm. You sneaked in and caught me under the tree. How would you know that? I mean, I thought that was my grandfather. Your father was very ill at the time. He died three months later. I know that. You remember that Christmas Eve very clearly then, don't you, Claudia? Yes. You asked me to trade your gifts for a fishing rod. You had seen at Abercrombie and Fitch, I believe. It was there Christmas morning, Claudia, wasn't it? With a big green ribbon around it. And a little reindeer card that said, to dad, love, Claudia. For the best dad a kid could ever have. I, I remember. Goodness, we were able to straighten this thing out. Excuse me, Papa. Yeah. Oscar just brought this message from the weather station. Oh, I see the weather's clear. You know, I was planning on giving you a tour tomorrow, but with the explosions today, I think Ed should get you back immediately. I agree. I know they don't plan on dynamiting until after the first, but I should talk to them right away. I hate to say this, but they may not believe you. Well, of course they will. Michael will. We've never lied to each other. Well, if you should have any problems, I'm going to give you this prototype of a children's communicator that we've been developing. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. Children all over the world will be able to talk to each other, and it automatically translates for them. Ed dropped the other prototype and broke it. The factory's making my own. Making a new one right away. Should be ready as soon as possible. Then you'll be able to contact me anytime you wish. Mm -hmm. And I have something for you, too, dear. Please take it. How nice of you. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. I know I'm leaving this whole matter in very good hands. Something terrible had happened. Actually, something wonderful happened. Hey, Barbara. Where's Mr. Baldwin? Oh, well, he's at the office waiting for word on the short wait. You weren't kidnapped. Oh, no. If you get these guys off to bed for me, I'll tell you all about everything. All right, let's go. Come on. Come on, let's go. Go. Mama! Oh, go. Mama!
So when the weather cleared, I thought we had to get back right away. Well, the kids were furious, I can tell you. They didn't even get to see the toy factory. The toy factory? Yes. Look, let's go over to the office right now, and I'll show you the precise place on Side A where the field is located. Side A? Wait a minute. There's your answer. Gaylord. Gaylord planned this whole thing to keep us drilling on the wrong site. What's that have to do with Santa Claus? Claudia, look, you've got to understand this. You and the children, you didn't go anywhere. You were obviously given some kind of a hallucinogenic drug, and you were held right here in town. I don't believe this. You think I dreamt the whole thing? It does seem the best rational explanation. I mean, darling, a, a remote-controlled reindeer sleigh, uh, a candy cane phone. Well, then what about this? Santa will tell you himself. Fine, let, let, let's call him right now. Don't treat me like a child. I told you his communicator is broken. I see. And I bought the candy and the Christmas ornament at the store? Darling, nobody can slow time. It's a scientific impossibility. And the city you described can't possibly exist in the Arctic Circle. Don't you understand? Claudia, you were drugged. Santa said you might not believe me. But it never occurred to me that you wouldn't believe me. I don't know how I feel right now, but I don't want to discuss it any further tonight. I'm very tired and I want to go to bed. Excuse me. Honey, what matters is that you and the children are back and safe. The fact that I never lied to you isn't enough, is it, Michael? Sumner and I are flying out to Site B at dawn. I'll be back in time to have lunch with you. Fine. But I want to go with you. I told you, you can't. Do you want to worry Dad all over again? No, but you should tell Mom. If we do, then Dad won't let any of us go. So you see, someone has to stay here. Yeah, but why does it always have to be the youngest? Anyway, I don't know why they won't believe us. You heard Mr. Murdoch talking to Dad. They think we've been given some kind of hallucinogenic drug. What's a hallu? It's a drug that makes you imagine things. That's dumb. Santa wouldn't give us anything like that. I know. But right now, there's no way to make Dad and Mr. Murdoch believe any differently. We can when Mom talks to Santa on the children's communicator. By that time, with all the dynamiting, there might not be any North Pole City. Why did we have to go over to IRC and take the company's snowmobile? Why can't we just take ours? Ours doesn't have a large enough fuel capacity, that's why. Okay, Dad and Mr. Murdoch have taken off. Let's go. Right here. All we have to do is locate the entrance. Yeah, but what if we can't find it? Well, we still have more than enough fuel to get back to Site B, which is right here. Are you sure we have everything? The sextant? Yes. Extra batteries? Yeah, and the sandwiches. Okay, let's get going. Where is 
everyone? They went to win Santa Claus. They left two hours ago. What? What, what do you mean? They left right after Dad and Mr. Murdoch. They took one of Dad's snowmobiles. They had to, Mom. They just had to. No one believes us. No. <sighs> Base to Apple Charlie 3. Base to Apple Charlie 3. jamming again but we should be operational soon when 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 can you start dynamiting tomorrow right on schedule december 24th i'm afraid they're out on the site someplace i'll get the plane i'll go with you no you keep trying to reach michael tell him what happened and get my flight plan from the center Base to Apple Charlie 3. Base to Apple Charlie 3. I estimate we have about another hour. Then we can start searching for the entrance. snowmobile tracks. It must be them. Good. Give me your position. Eight two miles north of the BOR, heading 357 degrees. As soon as I can reach Mr. Ball, I'll tell him. The ice fog is almost on us and we're lost. Ice fog. I'm going to land and go in on foot. I'm now 150 miles from the VOR, still heading 357 degrees. B. Okay. I want to get as many surface vehicles in here as possible. I was so scared. How did you find us? We were lucky we fixed the children's communicator so quickly. When we heard your calls on it, I just followed the signal into the ice fog. Santa's coming. Santa's coming. Santa's coming. Santa Claus is coming. Wow. That ice fog seems to be getting worse and worse. Reminds me of the one we had in 1803. That one socked us up so badly I wasn't able to make my deliveries until December 27th. Really botched up Christmas that year. I can tell you. Oh, the dynamiting has been canceled, hasn't it? I'm afraid not. As far as I know, they plan on clearing Site B right after the new year. I told you, no one believed us. I see. Well, then. I'm just going to have to do what I should have done in the first place. Prove it to Michael myself. 
Where's Ed? Ed? We should be ready to blast those jams about 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Good. I'm going back into town. Listen, if you talk to Michael, tell him I asked about his family, huh? Yeah. I sure hope he finds them. Let's face it, Craig, he doesn't have much of a chance. Are you coming back tomorrow? No. Well, you're gonna miss a terrific explosion. We're setting off so much dynamite, it's gonna look like an atomic bomb. Okay, Jack. Get up on the people transporter, Ed. I'm gonna beam you over to the weather station. I want hourly reports on that ice bomb. Ready, Santa. Absolutely incredible. Ed told me you want to know how I delivered presents to inaccessible locations. Well, that's how it's done. Set my control, jump on the platform of the presents, and quick as a wink, I'm whisked inside right next to the tree. Come on, Donald, come on. Donner, Blitzen, Dasher, and Dancer? I still don't believe it. Just like the poem. The night before Christmas. One of my favorites. Named all my reindeer after that form. Can they really fly when they have to? Oh, every Christmas Eve. That is, with the help of their anti-gravitational harnesses. Well, actually, my sleigh has been completely self-propelled for many years. Of course, the reindeer don't know that. I ought to break their little hearts if they didn't pull it on Christmas Eve. The people transporter. Maybe you could just beam us back home. I'm afraid not, Claudia. Doesn't have anywhere near that kind of range. Well... Let's get over to the chalet and have Martha set you up for the night. Okay. You kids must be hungry. No, but we will. I have search parties working around the clock. Mr. Baldwin, Mr. Murdoch asked me to tell you to meet him at the hotel as soon as you got in. start that again. But it did happen. Why won't you believe me? For once and for all, there is no Santa Claus. There's no elves, there's no Mrs. Claus, there's no time machine. Then what did happen? You were all drugged. A bad man by the name of Gaylord drugged all of you, and then you had some funny dreams. Are you still working for me? Yeah. Did you get my message? I did. I thought I could wait till morning. Anyway, I didn't want to leave my son alone. Look, I know what you're going through, but back off, kid, will you please? 
I got problems of my own. I'm flying out of here tomorrow to meet Mr. Idiot Fred Haley on that Kenya mess. I'll be back late tomorrow night. I want to know right now, just how long do you plan on going on with this search? Until I know one way or the other. Fifty men on my payroll, till you know one way or the other. You've got till tomorrow, and that's it. Sumner. You don't take any responsibility for all this, do you? CB is right. You were too tough on Claudia. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You were too tough on her. Realistic, not tough. Just as realistic as you were. Now, I mean it, kid. You've got till the end of the day tomorrow. Period. Sleep. Well, I would have slept a lot better if everyone knew we were safe. I know how you feel, Claudia. Well, I sure hope we have our communication system working this morning. That ice fog better look for this afternoon. Boy, am I hungry. Now, we're going to have to rush our oh. breakfast this morning. That's right. We've got a lot to do before I start making my deliveries tonight. Mm. If I can make them. Here he is, Harold. It's Faulkner about side A. He just missed you at the office. Yeah, Harold. The rigs are still jammed. We're gonna have to dynamite again, Mike. If Murdoch finds out I'm dynamiting at site A again, he'll know I'm not following his orders. That's for sure. I think we better follow his orders and abandon the site. No, go ahead and dynamite. Okay. And Harold. I didn't tell you about Murdoch's orders. Over and out. Thanks. But we're gonna find them this time, Dad. I know we are. <laughs> I think so too, son. I'm praying we do. They've gotta be there. That's where Mom landed. We're doing everything we can. No, you're not. You're gonna blow up North Pole City today for no reason. And maybe that's where they are. You're going to ruin Christmas forever. What is that? I've never seen anything so huge. That's one of my storage satellites, David. I'm usually responsible for all those UFO sightings on Christmas Eve. Storage? satellites. That's right, Marianne. Each satellite contains all the present for one area. Now then, with the amount of children in the world today, I couldn't possibly fly back and forth like I used to, now could I? Of course no. not. This way, I can reload on the spot. There you go. Good. Dr. Fernando, head of our research and development and manager of our toy factory. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. How's the loading of the satellites coming, Dr. Fernando? Excellent. Ten of them are already loaded. Ten of them. Good, good. What's really good is Pal. The first production model came off the line this morning. Wait here. Wait here. I'll show you. <laughs> Wait here. Pal is our favorite new toy for Christmas future. Hello, Mary Ann. Do you know any 
jokes. I know a riddle. Riddles. Oh, I love riddles. Ask me one. Okay. Let me see. It's black and white and has 16 wheels. A zebra on roller skates. Right. How did you know that? Because I have over 100 riddles stored in my memory. Among other things, the PAL has been designed to help you with your homework. Oh, yes. But it won't give you the answers. No, no. Oh, no. It won't. Positively not. It helps. But it will not cheat. Well, Dr. Fernando, I'll join these folks for a quick look at the factory. Then I've got to get over to the stables and do a final pre-flight on my sleigh. Yes, yes. Of course. Absolutely. satellite is almost loaded. Wonderful, wonderful. The 11th satellite is almost loaded. Almost loaded. Oh, You'll be able to take off right on schedule, Santa. Good, good. Santa? Mr. Santa? The ice falls, Lifty. Wonderful. Just in time, too. Wow, Oh, no, they're starting a the dynamite again. Then it must be on side A. I hate to tell you this, Santa, but Jim in the radar room is picking up a lot of activity on site B, too. What kind of activity? He thinks they're large vehicles. A whole bunch of large vehicles moving in there. What are they? Explosive carriers. Oh, no, they're not going to dynamite there on Christmas Eve, are they? Last in 35 minutes. Tell all the men to clear the site. It'll be a go at 4 o'clock sharp. Yes, sir. Son, we're going to go right back up and search again tomorrow. We've got to find them, Daddy. We've just got to. I'm going to go over and drop these papers off at Mr. Murdoch's hotel. I'll be right back. Dad? Yeah. Oh, never mind. CB? Where's your father? Well, try and catch him. One of the rigs just came in on side A and looks like we hit the biggest damn oil field you ever saw. Daddy! Daddy! on the phone. There's oil on site A. The biggest damn oil field you ever saw. 
I knew it. I knew it hit oil there. But don't you see? The proof bomb is right about Santa Claus. The oil is exactly where he said it was, not near North Pole City. It proves there's oil on Site A. That's all. But don't you see? You believed it was there, and you were right. Six minutes. Counting down, five minutes, 54 seconds. Dad, please listen to me. I promise to never ask you for anything again. I promise, I promise. Please listen to me. I guess I haven't listened to you much lately, have I? No, Dad. All right, I'm listening. If you believe this about Santa Claus, you'd be right, too. And Santa might have rescued Mom, David, and Marianne. What if they're in North Pole City when you dynamite Site B? Okay, I'll cancel the dynamiting until we take another look up there. Now, you wait for me in the house. Two minutes. Still counting down. One minute, 55 seconds. Base to site B, do you read me? You believe this? Base to site B, this is an emergency. One minute, 30 seconds. Terminate the countdown, do you read me? Terminate the countdown. I read you, Mike. Terminate the countdown. Yes? You still don't believe we were Santa Claus, do you? I stopped the dynamiting, didn't I? Yes. That still doesn't mean you believe. I wish I could. I really do. But it was real. I know it was real. And if it wasn't, then there's no chance that Santa rescued them. Excuse me. Can I get you to something before I leave? Maybe some ice cream? No, thanks. Well, I'm off to church services. I'll see you tomorrow. Night, Hedda. You want to open one of your presents? I understand. Dad. Can I sleep with you tonight? Of course you can.
make. What, what, ha how did, how, wh who? What, what, what? <laughs> what happened? I had Santa Claus's communicator with me, and it does work. So now maybe you'll believe me. I'll never doubt you again. I knew it. I knew Santa would rescue you. Oh, you should have seen Santa Claus. And the reindeer. <laughs> Santa was right about the oil, too. They discovered it exactly where he said it was. Oh, yeah. I knew you would. That's wonderful. Well, this is the greatest Christmas ever. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Wow, what is that? He's a robot, and his name is Pal. And he's your Christmas present from Santa. out right now. Why did you stop clearing Site B? Excuse me. Wait a second. Who are you? Kids! So the search party did find you. Hi, Mr. Murdoch. You know oh. any riddles? What is that? That's a Christmas present from Santa Claus. What? Mommy, come and look at these presents. Who told you about Site B? Uh, Harold Faulkner, I radioed him from the office as soon as I got in. Did he tell you anything else? No, he didn't have a chance. I, uh, came right on over here. He struck mm. a gigantic fuel on Site A. Just what Santa said. You came in on Site A. Through no fault of yours, Mr. Murdoch. What is that? That's Santa Claus. Sumner. There he really is. I can't believe it. Santa Claus. I can't believe it. Goodbye, Santa. Thank you for everything. See you next year. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. You're welcome. Congratulations, Michael. You're in for a big promotion. You're going to get a bigger house. You're going to get a big bonus. Oh, thanks, but you can keep the promotion. Oh, no. No, listen, Michael, you deserve it, kid. You deserve it. I know I do. But you can consider this my resignation. Oh, no. You're going to think differently about it. In the morning, I'll talk to you then, huh? We're all going back to Los Angeles permanently next week. <laughs> in their newfound wings. Be good, children. If you believe in love. Goodbye, Claudia. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. The love you give will grow until the whole world sings. If you believe in
Show the world and make the night and in this home for all your 